1984 was a landmark year for cinema. For starters, the Statue of Liberty was gifted to the US by France, allowing such memorable cameos as being a music-powered taxi in Ghostbusters 2 and causing Charlton Heston to punch a beach and do a mild swear in Planet of the Apes. It was also the year the Leicester Square Theatre opened. It took another 12 years to show an actual film by French cinema pioneers the Lumiere brothers that became so popular that in 1927 the theatre was rebuilt as a cinema and thus a sparkling legacy was born. You might say they could see the future projected in front of them. <laughs> I'll just pause for laughter. There were few more iconic views in the golden age of cinema than a glamorous star of the screen exiting a taxi into light drizzle, flanked by adoring fans walking down the red carpet to this entrance. And now, it's about to gain another famous visitor. Me? Obviously. I, I, unbelievable. With such an iconic history, it makes perfect sense that Cineworld Leicester Square is the only IMAX cinema in the West End, and the biggest IMAX experience in all of the UK. But more on that later. Passing through these hallways lets you walk in the footsteps of the most recognisable names in film history, from Marilyn Monroe to Renee Zellweger, Frank Sinatra to Dwayne Johnson, Elizabeth Taylor to Kate Blanchett. Having been a British institution for a hundred years means royalty has even popped by once or twice, including the late Queen Elizabeth II, seen here back in 1946. In fact, almost 30 years before Jurassic World Dominion was at this very cinema, Princess Diana was attending the premiere of the original Jurassic Park back in 1993. Just to add to the royal influence, there's even a plaque to commemorate the first showing of a film in 1896, which was unveiled in 1996 by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, now His Majesty King Charles III. And it's a plaque so lovely that I think it would look amazing on this wall. <laughs> so lovely, amazing on this wall. Just give me a minute. It would look amazing on this wall. You know, it's a plaque so lovely, it would look amazing where it already is. Oh, what a lovely plaque. Thankfully, for my back, there are other bits of memorabilia in the cinema that are considerably lighter. This is an original ticket for Gone with the Wind from a screening in the 1960s. I always lose my ticket about 10 seconds after I've bought it, so it's very kind and perhaps slightly risky that they've given it to me. How lovely. <laughs> okay, very good. Now take it back, please, before I lose it. Honestly, that was immensely stressful. Never give it to me again. From the glitz and glamour of the 70s to the eye-catching neon of the 80s and the high-end digital displays of today, Cineworld Leicester Square has changed a fair bit through the last 100 years, and not just from the outside. From the iconic staircase that's been in as many premiere photos as Tom Cruise, right through to the screens themselves, Cineworld Leicester Square has evolved. From hosting a single screen, and even, get this, an actual dance hall, to nine cutting-edge cinemas. And the jewel in the crown is, of course, IMAX with laser. But what makes IMAX with laser so impressive, you ask? I'm going to focus on the numbers here, because me wafting my arms around and shouting really won't do it any justice. This is the UK's widest screen and largest picture, being more than three times the height of a double-decker bus. The screen has five times the industry-level standard of contrast, 100% greater brightness, and the most exotic colours ever seen on screen. It's the cinema with the UK's largest seating capacity, 721 seats. And IMAX with laser is built with an exclusive 12-channel sound system for more expansive audio, adding four ceiling and two side speakers to the standard rears and fronts, delivering greater dynamic range and precision with more sound than ever before. Cineworld Leicester Square has everything a cinephile needs to truly experience the past, present, and the future all in one place. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a quick route around before anyone gets here and see if I can find some of that sweet memorabilia. And you know, if a signed poster or two ends up on eBay, that's, you know, just sharing the history, really. 